Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about some secrets of the new Lumetri color panel in Premiere Pro CC 2015. So first I'm gonna just go over a few basics that might help you out when you're using the new color view. Now normally you'd be in the editing view found here in the workspaces bar to get into your sort of color correction mode. Of course you click on the word color and that'll open up the Lumetri color panel and it will also give you quick access to the Lumetri scopes. Now normally they would look like this probably when you first launch it for the first time. So that's how I'm gonna show it to you for now. And then I'll show you some secrets about using some of these other tools as well. Now going into the color tab, there's just a few basics that you might wanna know. For instance, when you click on one of these boxes, you'll notice that all the other sections will disappear. So if I click on basic correction, then creative curves, etc., disappear. If I click on curves, the same thing happens. That one is maximized and all the others are minimized. Now that is an option. If you click on the little bar right here, you'll notice that I have solo mode checked. So if I uncheck that, I could click on basic correction and now I can see both basic correction and curves. So it's just an option. I think it's a bit cleaner to keep solo mode checked so you don't wind up scrolling all day. But if you like to have all the tools accessible, you may not want it that way. So I'm gonna keep it on solo mode for now just for ease of display. You can do it however you prefer. Now in the basic corrections panel, there are of course your input LUTs, and those are basically things that you would apply to correct, say a flat profile on a camera. So let's say this was some flat footage shot on an Alexa, I could apply something like the Alexa default log C setting. This of course was not shot on an Alexa, but it is a fairly flat shot, so let's see how it does. And it actually gives it a pretty nice look overall maybe a little too contrasty in this case, but that's all a matter of personal preference. For now, I'm gonna keep that on none, but of course you can add your own custom camera lookup tables as well by going to custom or browse. Setting it back to none, we'll go into the Lightroom-like controls here. So of course we have temperature and tint, and exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, and of course, saturation. Now, I wish they had put vibrance in this tab, just like Lightroom, but for whatever reason, they put that in the creative tab, and you also have a redundant saturation control there as well. If we go back, let's talk about what we want to change about this shot. It's exposed fairly well, and if we look at our waveform here, we could basically see that it's fairly well exposed. We could probably use a little more black points, but the midtones are pretty much right on. So I'm gonna leave exposure right now, and I'm gonna up the contrast, definitely. I'm gonna take the highlights down, because you can see our highlights are probably a little bit blown out here. So I'm gonna do what I can to recover those, and I'm gonna bring up the shadows just to sort of increase the dynamic range of the shot a little bit. And that sort of flattens everything out even more. So we need to get some contrast back in. Now, of course, I'm doing that with the contrast slider, but I also have the whites and black sliders to work with. Now, the whites, I'm still kind of clipping here, so I'm gonna bring those down even more. Normally, if I wasn't clipping, I'd probably bring them up just to add a little contrast back into the shot. But for now, I'm gonna bring them down, and I'm watching my scopes to tell when my whites stop clipping. But of course, you have to use your eyes and see what looks best for the shot as well. I'm gonna take the blacks down, and again, I'm watching the scopes here to see when I have a true black point. You'll see when things start to clip, and this edge on the bottom here of the scope, you can see that I am now clipping some black points. So I'm just gonna take that back a hair to just before they start clipping right around there, and if I have a few true black points, that's not the end of the world. Now one thing I wanna to touch on before I move on is that if you don't like anything you've done, you can actually quickly reset things. And it's not that easy to figure out. You might try clicking on the word blacks twice to reset it, or on the slider to reset it. None of that works. What you actually have to do is click on the slider, or double click on the slider, and you'll notice it gets reset. So I'm gonna undo that, but of course that will apply to any of your settings. If you double click on the slider, it will reset it, and again, I'll just undo that. Going over to creative, this is where you could load your own creative looks, but also you can play around with some built-in looks. For instance, faded film will kind of flatten everything out. I'm gonna reset that, and you could sharpen your image or remove some sharpness from your image. 
As I said before, here's where you can add vibrance, which acts kind of similar to saturation, except it won't blow out things like skin tones, and it's usually a bit more subtle than saturation, which can sometimes make your color look a bit over the top. So if I add more vibrance here, you'll notice it's bringing out some of the colors in the tree in the foreground and the sky. If I want even more, you can see how saturation will really blow things out, like the bricks here and everything just gets kind of crazy. So. I'll come over and I'll reset saturation. Now another thing you can do in this panel is sort of do split toning. And what I mean by that is, for instance, a lot of looks will feature sort of blue color in the shadows and a kind of warm yellowish color in the highlights. And obviously the further I drag this out, the more intense that'll be. And you can see what that did there. If I shut off the whole creative tab, by clicking on that checkbox, most of what's happening in this tab right now is the split toning. So you can kind of see what it's doing to the highlights in the sky here and then the shadows in these buildings here, adding kind of the cool to the shadows and the warm to the highlights. And that's just a really popular look that people tend to overuse. Now, if I want to reset those, I can just double click here on the point as well, and that'll reset them back to normal. Curves is, again, sort of a redundant set of controls to similar things that you could do in the basic correction panel or in the color wheels, which I'll touch on next. So let's say I just wanted to bring out the contrast a little more. I'll make a point here on the shadows, make a point here right in the middle on the midtones, and one here on the highlights. Now you have to understand that is the top right is going to be your highlights, the bottom left is going to be your shadows, and right here in the middle is your midtones. So when you're dealing with curves, if you do something like this where you bring down the shadows a little bit and you bring up the highlights a bit, that's typically referred to as an S-curve. Now right now I'm adjusting the overall luminance of the scene, but I could decide to do an S-curve or any other curves adjustment in one of the single color channels as well, red, green, and blue. Similarly, I could control saturation with my hue saturation curve here. Now to illustrate this a little bit better, I'm going to bring up another tool in my Lumetri scopes. If I right click and I click on vector scope YUV, you'll notice I get a traditional vector scope which shows me the saturation of each of my different colors. So you'll notice that it's a wheel just like this wheel right here and you'll notice that here are my reds, similarly here are my reds. Here are my blues, similarly here are my blues. So it exactly corresponds. So let's say for instance I want to bring out my greens. I can click over here on my green point which will just add some points in the green section and you'll notice if I drag that up you can see how over here in my scopes my greens are responding to that and you see that I have much more saturation in the greens. Now the way to read this is the closer you are to the center in this blob the less saturation you have in that color. The further you are out to the outside of the circle the more saturation you have in that color. So let's try it in the reds. I'm gonna make a point by just clicking on this. Of course I could make points by hand as well. But going back to the reds, I'm just going to drag out the reds, and you'll notice that, well, let me do it a little bit more so you can see it, because there's just not a lot of red in this shot. But you can see that my red section gets taken out toward the red color. Again, I'm just going to try it in the blue area, and this time I'm just going to make these points by hand and just drag this out toward the blues, maybe a little bit more down here and you can see how my vector scope responds to that as well. Now I've made a mess of the shot so I'm just gonna double click in the middle here and I'm gonna reset that. Let's look at the color wheels and this is yet another way to do a similar thing. You could probably do all of your correction from right within this panel. If I use this slider here you'll notice it will bring down the brightness on the shadows and if I look at my waveform you'll notice the black points are going lower as I drag that lower and I could do the same with the highlights, I could bring those up, and then let's say overall the shot is feeling a bit dark now, I can drag the brightness up on the midtones. Now of course I could add tints here as well, so I could come over to the midtones and start dragging toward the red and give the shot overall a warmer, redder feel. Again, if I need to reset anything, just double click. And lastly, the vignette tab. It's pretty simple. There's an amount. If I go positive, it kind of brightens the edges. If I go negative, which is probably what you're usually going to do, it darkens the edges, kind of drawing your attention into the center of the frame. I can play with the midpoint, which just controls the size of the vignette circle. The roundness, which will make it either 
more round or more square of a shape. And if I crank up the amount, you'll be able to see that a little bit better. And of course the feather, which makes it kind of more or less obvious. So if I take it all the way down, you can see the roundness slider a lot clearer and what that's doing. And of course, the amount slider and what that's doing and the midpoint slider and what that's doing but of course that looks really weird so I'm gonna reset the feather back to its default now the other thing I want to talk about is a few selection modes for while you're grading now you'll notice as I drag my playhead through the scene as I go from one clip to the next down here it will automatically select the next clip so that my lumetri color is now controlling that next clip now that is a preference and it's actually really helpful when you're color grading but if for some reason you don't like it or if you find it confusing you can come up here to the sequence menu and uncheck selection follows playhead and now you'll notice it's no longer selecting the clip as I mouse over it now something I should bring up is that selection follows playhead I'll just turn it back on will follow your selectors if I uncheck targeting on that track and in this case the audio as well because these are audio video clips you'll notice it will no longer select the clip. Similarly, if I have two clips stacked on top of each other, you'll notice that it won't work unless I'm dealing with a targeted track. And then in this case, it will only target track two because only track two is active. If I have both of them active, it will jump to the highest active track. So it's just something you need to know. Now another thing you need to know is how to quickly enable and disable this. A lot of times when you're color grading, you'll want to know exactly what your color correct is doing compared to the original. Now the slow way to do this is to go to the effects control tab and uncheck the Lumetri color FX button and of course that works. But there's a quicker way to do that and it involves a keyboard shortcut that's not set up by default. So if I go to the Premiere Pro menu keyboard shortcuts and search for Lumetri. You can see there's a bypass Lumetri color effects and I set it in mine to zero and the reason I did that is because the similar shortcut in speed grade is zero so I figured why not keep it consistent with Adobe's color tool. So I set mine to zero and I'll hit OK. And now as long as my Lumetri color tab is selected and I hit zero on my keyboard I can quickly toggle that effect on and off and even if I'm loop and I'm gonna move this clip out of the way even if I'm looping playback as long as I'm in the Lumetri color tab if I hit zero I can turn it on and off to see what my color correct is doing now the last thing I want to touch on here is our own color retooled a set of color correction plugins for Premiere Pro and Speedgrade and how they work with this new version so if I come into my effects and I go to presets to load my traditional presets, I'm going to come to my effects tab and click on this button right here in the tab and hit import presets. Now if I go to the folder that I downloaded for color retooled, I can select my Premiere Pro presets for color retooled and hit open. And now you'll notice that I have a bunch of presets for color retooled. So let me just reset my Lumetri panel here by going to my effects control and hitting this reset button which will actually set it back to zero. Now if I apply a color retooled effect, let's just come on over to tints and I do something like cool shadow warm highlights, one of these, you'll notice that I have instantly my effect applied. Now what is it doing? You'll notice I have the default Lumetri color which is applied to every clip in Premiere Pro CC 2015 and then I have a second one for my color retooled. Now the way Premiere works when you have multiple Lumetri color effects is this panel will only show you whatever one is at the bottom of the stack. So if I come on over to the creative tab I now have my cool shadow warm highlights. Now let's undo that and I'm just going to apply another effect just to show you how it works again and I'll come over to Vintage 3 I'll hit play and again you'll notice I have two effects here the bottom one of which is my vintage 3 effect and that is the one that is shown in my Lumetri color panel under the creative tab. Now there's another way to work with the presets and that's to actually use the speed grade version of the presets. So I'm going to delete this one and show you how it would work if I just want to load it from the speed grade version. I can come on to my Lumetri color which is applied by default to my clip and just come on over to the creative tab. 
And now I could just hit browse and go to my color retooled, but in this case, I'm gonna to go to the speed grade looks folder, not to the Premiere presets version. And this way I can just select any of my presets and I'm gonna hit golden glow and I'm gonna hit okay. And now you'll notice it's been applied. Now, either way you apply it doesn't really matter. The cool thing is there's now an intensity slider. So if I like this golden glow, but think it's just a little too much, I can just bring down the intensity a bit to my liking and now I basically have an opacity slider for my effect and of course I could do anything else I want on top of it so I have this but I think well you know what let's add a little more contrast I could come on over to the basic tab and do that so what the Lumetri color combined with color retool really gives you is a bunch of presets to start from but then an easy way to customize on top of that which is a lot more full featured than what you had in Premiere Pro CC 2014 and before so it's a really nice combination of a way to use our presets and just use the Lumetri color tab with it. And of course, you don't have to use our presets at all. You could just use this great new Lumetri color tab to customize your color correction to your own needs. And it's really easy to work with. Now, a few things I would like in the future would be maybe some option for secondaries. But the cool thing about it is because it's a Premiere Pro effect, you kind of do have a way to do secondaries in that you can throw a mask on pretty much any effect in Premiere. So I can come in here and do something like start masking out the effect but I just can't do keying all that easily like I would like. So maybe in the future we'll get that, that would be really great. But in the meantime, it's a really full-featured and creative panel that you guys can finally play with.